All right, I would like to talk about the healthcare production function. And just like every production function that has ever existed, we have inputs on the x-axis and outputs on the y-axis. Now, of course, you can ask the question, what kind of output are we talking about when we talk about healthcare? And in general, this is going to be a theoretical concept called the quality adjusted life year. And this is because anytime we're talking about inputting, say, technology or hours with a doctor or any kind of input in the healthcare sector, what we're trying to get is not just extra years of life added to their life. Because a lot of technology, and maybe even most technology in healthcare, doesn't add years to your life. Rather, it adds um, health to your life. It makes your life more painful or something like that. So um, it kind of must have some techniques for coming up with, uh, if, if something reduces your pain by 10% and you are really, really in pain, how do we translate that into something akin to life years? And I won't talk in this video about the techniques for doing that, but just know that quality adjusted life years is a measure of how much health benefit you get from any technology. Now, what about input? And the simplest form of input is going to be dollars invested in the healthcare system or dollars, dollars invested in health. Now this health production function has the classic shape of a production function. And this shape is always driven by the fact that when you're making decisions about what to buy with your health, you're going to choose the most important things first, the, the technologies or the dollars that add the most to your, your life or reduce your pain the most. And then once you've spent money on those, then you're going to the second most useful set of things. So the way of really thinking about this is to brainstorm health technologies or healthcare providers, just come up with a big brainstorm. And then you rank those things according to their cost effectiveness or according to how many quality adjusted life years does that bring per dollar invested. Okay, so we have six possible doctors that you could hire. And the way I'm going to approach this is to imagine that you are a healthcare administrator in a rural town that doesn't even have a hospital, it has no healthcare. And you're trying to figure out if you have enough money to hire one doctor, who do you hire? And then after that, if you have enough money for a second doctor, who's the second doctor you hire? And to come up with that ordering of the order in which you'd hire new doctors into your clinic is going to depend on the value of each doctor according to the added quality adjusted life years for that population. So here we've got an OBGYN, a prenatal care doctor, or they deliver babies and women's health, et cetera, et cetera. We've got an oncologist, a cancer doctor, a general practitioner, a doctor who just sort of does everything, um, a dermatologist, a skin doctor, pulmonologist, lung doctor, and a podiatrist, a foot doctor. So I'm going to come up with a ranking of these doctors in terms of quality adjusted life years per dollar spent on the doctor. Okay, so I ranked the general practitioner first, meaning if you could only hire one, it's going to be a GP. The OBGYN, the women's health, prenatal health doctor second. The third doctor I would hire would be the lung doctor, and then the cancer doctor, then the foot doctor. And last but not least, the well, actually last but least in terms of quality adjusted life years, we have the dermatologist for your skin. And of course, that's my opinion about these. And a lot of what economists do when they come up with cost effectiveness numbers is argue about these numbers. Like how, how much of the pain from foot problems uh, how does that pain translate into quality adjusted life years? And just like in all academic and scientific fields, people will get into deep arguments about these because it will translate into real policy. But the point I'm trying to make here is you're going to map these onto this. So you're going to say, okay, if I can only hire one doctor, that's going to be a general practitioner, the GP, and that value added in terms of quality adjusted life years for the population is about that much. So if I add a second doctor, this is the OBGYN, 
then we already have the base level of health from having the general practitioner, but that OBGYN adds a little bit of extra, and the little bit extra is not nearly as much as the general practitioner. We're not like way up here, but they do add a little bit. They add, they add that extra amount, which is still less than the GP, but it's still pretty high. And then the third doctor I add is the pulmonologist. And you can see that the marginal value to the population of having a lung doctor is that much, which is still less than the OBGYN, but it's still higher than our next doctor, who's going to be the, the oncologist, the cancer doctor. And the marginal benefit of the cancer doctor is this amount, which is still less than the pulmonologist, and you get the idea. So, so as you sort of add new things to the system, the new things you add are going to be uh, on average of a lower marginal value than the previous things you added as the system gets bigger and bigger. So because you rank order treatments or doctor types or whatever according to cost effectiveness, you are going to get this diminishing marginal shape to your production function. Now here I did this with doctors. We could have done this with technologies. Like we could have said, um, if you add surgical techniques to your system, if you add drugs for diabetes management, if you add kits to diagnose diabetes, all of these are technologies that could enter into the system. And we could rank order those technologies in a way that made sense, in a way that was informed by academic research, and we could place them on the production function in the same way. And so with a lot of healthcare systems where there's a limited budget of things that they can cover, they're going to have economists do this where they come up with cost effectiveness numbers and they're only going to let technologies into the system that are considered cost effective given that limited budget. And one of the problems that avoids is you can imagine if you have a bunch of technologies lined up in order of uh, their effect on, on health on this axis then um, that, that's optimal. But if you have, let's say, the technology way out here that has a very marginal benefit, but it's super lucrative for uh, the people who invented the technology, maybe for the doctors, or for someone else in the system. If, um, if the system is designed in a way to where that person can kind of bring their new technology of marginal benefit to the front of the line, then you're going to get a health production function that's not shaped the way it should be. It's sort of like, okay, marginally valuable technologies first, and then it's gonna be kind of random in terms of the order of this. And in which case, you could actually have a huge drop in health because most of the resources are going to the most lucrative treatments. So that would be actually one of my arguments why um, it, it makes sense for a system that's ethical to pay attention to cost effectiveness.